let us see the development of sporophyte and its structure on the dorsal surface of the thallus of anthocyros we find elongated horn like structures which resemble the horns of animals these structures are called as the sporophytes at the base of the sporophyte there is a collar like structure surrounding the sporophyte this collar like structure is called as the involucre the sporophyte grows to a height of 2 to 15 cm depending on the species before we understand the development of the sporophyte let us see the internal structure of the sporophyte the internal structure of the sporophyte can be well studied in the longitudinal section so the ls of sporophyte reveals two distinct parts of the sporophyte one is the basal structure which is bulbous massive and the upper part which is elongated and slender the basal part bulbous region is called as the foot and the upper elongated structure is called as the capsule the foot is made up of vacuolated parenchymatous cells the parenchyma cells which are towards the periphery of the foot are vertically elongated and palisade like the remaining cells of the foot region are parenchymatous and vacuolated these are parenchymatous cells which are vacuolated in nature in certain species of anthocyros the cells of the foot are drawn into small hostorial like structures these structures get embedded into the tissue of the gametophyte for absorption of nutrients and water the capsule is made up of 4 to 6 layers of cells these layers are called as the capsule wall layers the layers of cells are formed by the periclinal division of the amphithecial cells the outermost layer of the capsule wall is the epidermis epidermis is made up of vertically elongated cells which are highly cutanized they have thick walls and are highly cutanized cells the epidermis also shows the presence of stomata and these stomata are guarded by the guard cells on the epidermis at certain regions of the epidermis we find stomata which are guarded by the guard cells the remaining layers are made up of parenchymatous cells which contain chloroplast in order to the epidermis we find two to three layers of parenchymatous cells which contain chloroplast these cells help in photosynthesis they are the chlorenchyma cells stomata helps in the exchange of gases and the chlorenchymatous tissue helps in assimilation the innermost wall layer of anthocyros is differentiated as an archesporial tissue 
the innermost wall layer forms the archisporial tissue or the sporogenous tissue the sporogenous tissue contains 50% fertile cells and 50% sterile cells approximately 50% of the cells of the sporogenous tissue are fertile the remaining 50% cells are sterile in the initial stages of development of the sporophyte the archisporial tissue appears as a single layer some cells of this archisporium are the spore mother cells which are fertile and some cells of the archisporial tissue are sterile that is they do not undergo reduction division or meiosis and these cells are called as the elater mother cells the elater mother cells simply elongate at maturity divide and they form two to three cells which have irregular shape and help in dispersal the central region of the sporophyte consists of 16 vertical rows of cells these 16 vertical rows of cells form the columella columella is a sterile tissue which is seen in the center of the capsule which supports the growth of the capsule when the capsule is tender and the columella also helps in the dispersal of spores at maturity at the junction of the capsule and the foot we find two to three layers of cells these layers of cells are meristematic in nature and this zone forms the meristematic region the presence of meristematic zone is of evolutionary significance in anthocerous plants this complete complex structure that is the foot the elongated capsule the foot cells the meristematic region the wall layers the archisporial tissue the columella everything develops from a single cell which is called as the zygotic cell this zygotic cell is seen on the dorsal surface of the thallus inside the archegonium that is when we take a vertical section of the thallus we find the archegonium on the dorsal surface the fertilized egg on the dorsal surface after fertilization the zygote develops a cellulosic wall around it this cellulosic wall is called as the calyptra initially the zygote starts dividing inside the calyptra and the calyptra surrounds the zygote as the zygote increases in its size that is as the sporophyte develops further it pierces the calyptra region and emerges out and the calyptra remains as a collar like structure at the base of this sporophyte this collar like structure is called as the involucre which is seen here now we'll see how the sporophyte this complex structure of foot meristematic zone and the capsule develops from the zygotic cell a single zygotic cell divides and then develops into the complete sporophyte